Thank you to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. In this video, I'm exploring an ancient Chinese engineering breakthrough using water to make fire burn hotter. More specifically, harnessing running water to power a water wheel, which in turn cranks a box bellows that blasts air into a roaring bed of coke. It's a surprisingly complex setup, but one that saves enormous amounts of manual labor. Let's see if we can get it to work. As I work my way through historical technologies and towards the industrial revolution, one key milestone will be the ability to melt and cast iron. Abundant access to cast iron was a cornerstone of the industrial revolution. It was cheaper than copper alloys and had thermal properties and wear resistance that made it invaluable for machinery and infrastructure. In Europe, cast iron wasn't widely produced until around the 14th century. In China, however, cast iron technology has been mastered much earlier. Archaeological evidence dates it back to at least the 5th century BCE. By the 1st century, Chinese engineer Du Xi is thought to be the first person to make a water-powered bellows that can run a blast furnace. Over time, various designs appeared using vertical or horizontal water wheels and several different types of bellows. The struggle to reach ever higher temperatures is a recurring challenge in human history. As far back as ancient Egypt, people discovered that adding more air to fire makes it hotter. Teams of workers would blow through simple clay pipes to smelt copper. Over time, bellows replaced blow pipes, evolving from simple pop bellows to more efficient accordion and box bellows. I've experimented with most of these methods, and while they work, they all share one major drawback. Someone has to pump them continuously, often for hours on end. Most often, we end up switching to an electric blower after some time to ease our labor. For some designs, a natural draft can be produced, where the heat of the fire causes enough vacuum to bring more air inside, forgoing the need to manually pump air in. But the amount of air that they draw in can't be maximized as well as it can with bellows. In the past, we've been able to do a natural draft furnace for melting bronze, smelting iron, and melting glass. But the even higher temperature requirements for melting cast iron will require some form of forced air. And that's where innovations like Dushi's water-powered bellows are going to come in. I've always believed the best way to learn science and engineering is to get your hands dirty, experiment, build, and see how things work. That's why I'm excited to share that this video is sponsored by KiwiCo. KiwiCo delivers hands-on projects straight to your door, designed to get kids excited about science, engineering, art, and more, with five different club lines tailored to each age and interest. Each crate is packed with high quality material and rigorously tested to ensure it's both fun and educational. I tried out their two-in-one lantern kit and it was a lot of fun to build. The design is top-notch, the instructions are crystal clear, and the final result, super cool. What I really appreciate is these crates aren't just one and done activities. The builds are sturdy and the skills carry over to how kids approach problem solving in everyday life. Honestly, I've had something like KiwiCo growing up. I think I would have jumped into STEM even earlier. If you want to spark that same kind of curiosity and discovery in your own family, check out KiwiCo. Use my code HTME to get 50% off the first month at kiwico.com slash HTME. That's kiwico.com slash HTME. In my last video, I explored the process of making concentrated fuel that would best let us achieve the high temperatures we need to reach with the creation of coke. Next, let's build our own bellow system to provide the airflow for it. Dushi's box bellow is a very simple design, with a box on one side on a hinge that opens and closes. A simple but effective design, but it will only push air on the forward stroke, not the back stroke. So for us, we're going to use a little bit more advanced design of the Fuego box, which uses a valve system that allows air to be pumped in both the forward and back pole. Adri actually previously built me one of these for my forge, but unfortunately it was lost during the fire several years ago. But this time, we need to build an even bigger one. In one of my earlier glass blowing attempts, before we switched to the successful natural draft design, we attempted to build a water powered bellow system as well, which sort of worked, but ultimately it did not move enough air to be really effective. So we want to build something as big as possible to give us the best possible results. Uh, Scott? Guys? Scott? Did you hear something? The design is pretty simple. It's just a big box. Then we add an extra panel inside for the plunger which will push the air either way as it's pushed back and forth. Then we cut the vent flaps with leather covers on the inside. These will seal shut whenever air is pushed against them, creating a one-way seal. It's significantly more resistant with yeah. all the air we're moving. 
Next, outside vents are added, which is where the air will be pushed out to. Which we then connected with a wood channel, so all the air exits at a single point. At this point, we could just manually pump the bellows, but let's find a better way to save some labor with my water wheel that I previously built a few years ago. No jokes, please, gentlemen. One of the big issues that I ran into with my previous water wheel was the axle constantly breaking. Learning from the much more successful axle that we made for the tread wheel, I decided to upgrade to a thicker wood axle. My plan next was to upgrade the water wheel and widen it to give us a little bit more power to work with. But after doing more research and a deeper dive into optimizing water wheel designs, I ended up deciding to just start from scratch and build it with a whole new design. Many water wheels are just a kind of simple paddle design which I used before and they work pretty well. But later designs optimized overshot water wheels to have more of a bucket design where it holds the weight of the water for a longer duration as it spins, capturing more of the power. So for mine, I used two angled boards to form the paddle, making the rough shape of a bucket. The other improvement I made was to increase the number of paddles to 36, and increase the overall diameter of the wheel to an extra foot, so it's now eight feet. Lastly, to try and seal the wood, I torched it all with fire. Now we just need to connect the two machines together, which ended up proving to have its own challenges. This is what we've got working for us so far. We got everything modestly functional. The whole water wheel is still like a little underpowered compared to where we'd like it to be. I think a lot of that is just due to water flow. Obviously we're not working with a real river here. If we were, I think we'd get a lot more power out of this, but it is functional. First off, we got it attached up to our bellows, our box bellows. We did start originally with a wooden shaft here, and we ended up snapping it twice. And then replacing it with an iron one. However, I don't think that was actually the problem, which is why we ended up adding this track here. There was just a lot of downward force on the upstroke of the water wheel here, and that was flexing the entire thing. In fact, when we put on the iron axle, we still had flex in it, despite the fact that this is inch thick steel. But otherwise, we got the crankshaft working, we got everything lubricated up with uh, beeswax. When we first had this up and spinning and working on the bellows, it creaked and groaned profusely. And then as soon as we added the beeswax to it, it ran pretty much silent. So I think that was a huge indicator that there was a lot of wood on wood friction here in the axle, here on the crankshaft on both ends, and then on the track as well. And that marked a huge improvement in the whole machine. But now with everything finally working, we can make our first attempt at melting cast iron. Started first with some wood at the bottom to get initial fire going, then added the first load of coke. Once that reached full temperature, we added a new batch of coke, half of our cast iron, 
and some limestone as flux. After that burned through, we repeated that with another batch of all three. Okay, we're hot it is. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> My hot dogs. <laughs> Once that all burned through, it's time to tap it and see if we have any melted iron to pour. Iron there, but it looks, feels kind of semi consolidated. So we were able to do our first attempt at doing the cast iron, and I think for the most part it went pretty good, but we did not get a castable result. So I dug out the bottom of the cupola and got this thing, which is not quite the shape of the cast iron I was going for, but uh, it's definitely something. I think this is all 24 pounds, so it all definitely melted and formed together. Pretty much completely combined, I'd say. I think the issue is just that it got cold at the bottom, but that we did reach the necessary temperatures to melt it. There's a few different problems that might have caused this. The two year or where the air comes in might be too high. So that once it gets to the bottom, there's not enough airflow to actually keep it burning. This is our first time using Coke and we were a little concerned it hadn't reached full temperature. So after doing the second batch, we ended up adding more Coke. And I think the metal just worked its way to the bottom and the Coke and everything was on top. So then that part was hot and the bottom just kind of cooled. So that might've just been an issue of our timing. And if we had tapped it sooner, we might've been able to have a usable casting out of that. We had a, a bit of smoke at the beginning, I think it was from the wood that we first used, but once that burned off, it was clean, which is very unique about Coke is that, you know, all the impurities have already been burned off. So even now running this full industrial furnace, it's giving off less fumes than I would say just having a campfire in my backyard. We kind of run into the same issue. And I think that's just that we don't have a full river at our disposal. Even with, I think we're up to four pumps now, it's still not quite really giving us the full power of a real river. The buckets of the water wheel are not quite fully filling up. Kind of the main goal of this video was to get the mechanisms of the water wheel and the bellows going to feed the Coke. And the fact that we were definitely able to melt cast iron I think is a great sign. But unfortunately, and especially because we threw in a few extra rounds of Coke, we are pretty much all out of the stuff we spend months making. So we're gonna have to replenish that supply, hopefully with a little bit more experience, we can get this going and uh, start doing some casting. Lots of potentials with cast iron beyond just, uh, you know, actually casting the steam engine eventually out of it. Thanks again for watching. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.